Welcome to another episode of Road to 500 Horsepower on the Nissan Z. In today's episode, we are installing the 525 watt borrow fuel pump on the Nissan Z so that we can start pouring some ethanol into this car. Can't pour full E85 until we upgrade the high pressure fuel pump. This is just a low pressure. High pressure is another $2,000, so I'm gonna wait on that. But for now, let's put some E85. So for the following video, I gotta give creds where creds are due. We will be using Z1 Motorsport Glide instructions to install the fuel pump in combination to looking at my brother chris's zilla fool boost video he already installed the low pressure fuel pump with the relay kit so i'm going to be using a lot of his videos help so if you guys want to check his video out for full proper installation go ahead man because he's helping me right now i'm just kind of recording it again all right guys so the fuel pump is located in your passenger back seat under here so based on chris's video he says remove this now removing that will give you better access to pull off this this carpet now it said you will have some padding here, which we do have some. This is just insulation right here. Oh look, we see my optic fiber lights right here. Nice. Now you can easily see the fuel pump there. Now you will have a sensor there. You will have to unplug it. Now you will have fuel pressure at this point. They said to disconnect that sensor right there and then try to start your vehicle so that it dies out because of no fuel. That way you release some pressure. So what he's gonna do is start the car and since the fuel pump's disconnected, it's gonna, it should starve the car. So I guess, go for it. All right, guys, so we finally got the car to starve. It wasn't starving, he just had to give it a little gas. So we're gonna start it again to make sure it's Fully starved, you know? All right, go, go for it. That sounds pretty dead to me. I don't All know right. if I wanna. All right, yep. that... Okay, a little bit of spill, not too much. You're then gonna remove six, eight millimeter bolts around the top hat of the fuel pump. You'll see them right there. After you remove the top hat, the last thing is taking out the actual fuel pump. Now, one mistake I made and I actually, I was on empty. It's better if your tank is on empty because you don't have a bunch of fuel here. Uh, someone called me on the phone while I was pumping gas and I accidentally overfilled it. So this is about half a tank in. There's a lot of fuel, but regardless, just kind of wiggle your way around the fuel pump. Be careful, there's a lot of wires, a lot of hoses, and the edges of where the fuel pump is coming out is kind of sharp. So just be careful, wiggle it around, take your time. I found it easy to kind of squeeze the fuel pump with both hands, like squeezing these plastic parts a little bit um, so they can fit within the circle. Um, but the fuel pump is pretty much out. There's just one remaining hose that I have to disconnect, which I have to find out, which I'm pretty sure is this one right here. So what we're gonna do now is unplug these plugs right here. But so you don't lose track of which one goes where, you gotta mark them. We're putting A. If you see anybody's Nissan C fuel pump with letters like AA, you know they watch Zilla Full Boost video, okay? Because he did this and I'm gonna do it too because it's helpful and it remembers where to put your plug. My bad guys, I'm getting ahead of myself, but basically we disconnected the plugs. Now we need to take off this thing off the fuel pump. So there's these little three tabs here on the side. One, two, and then three. Grab yourself one of these little picks. They come super helpful. Just kind of lift them a little bit. Don't No excessive force. Just get them off the tab a little bit. Then you'll have this little thing that will be stuck to this metal rod right here. Grab one of these picks. Get it really in between there and so kindly just kind of pry it off. Once you pry it off, this will allow you to put your pick inside this little tab right there. See that little tab right there? And just kind of flip it back a little bit that will allow the metal rod to slip out and just like that you will be able to remove this all right guys so we just took oh i got my sock off bro ah! <laughs> <laughs> all right good one good one good yeah. one this is the fuel sock guys and this one's at the bottom of the fuel pump three tabs just use a pick all right guys and then at the top of the fuel pump you'll have this blue harness which pretty easy just press it out take this out and then take out the baby shiny take that shitter out all right, anyways, take out the freaking shooter, man. No, just the push. Oh. <laughs> All right, so Dang, this. This thing got some weight to it. All right, he's gonna cut off the sensor, literally off the brand new fuel pump. Crazy, bro. I don't know why he even trusts me to do these things. I always mess up stuff, and then. 
We gotta cut it the closest to the con- to the. I think that's pretty good. Come on, give it some. <laughs> there you go. <sighs> nice. That's a good little tug test. Nice. All good. Pretty good. Yeah. All right. That's good. All right, guys. Now we transferred the collar and the O-ring from the old fuel pump back into the new one. We inserted the fuel pump back inside. So it's nice and plugged in. The wires are coming out through here. And now we're gonna put in the Supply Z1 Motorsports collar bracket here to because obviously this one's huge. So you can't you can't put the OEM one back on because it won't clip in. So that's why they provide this bracket. You'll put it down underneath here and you'll get the screws to kind of sandwich it together. So Z1 Motorsport bracket to hold the fuel pump together. The so. best way to go about it is line the opening with the Z1. Yep. It's the best way to do it, the easiest way. And then you just gotta line up the hole, this hole with the little circular hole right there. Yeah, there you go. You're welcome. All right, Drake, relax. All right, so the, we already got the fuel pump inside the assembly. We kind of put everything back together. Did you put that clip in there? <clears throat> no, we're gonna. We still, we guys, still gotta do that. So don't forget to put that little clip that you guys picked off back with the metal rods right there. What we're gonna do right now is finish off the other end of the wire connection. I cut this much off. This is that wire harness that was uh, connected to the fuel pump, and it is plug C. If you guys label them, plug C, and we're pretty much gonna tap them into here. So blue goes with red, black goes with gray. Okay, blue with red, black with gray. Tap them together, and then you should be good there. Squeeze. <sighs> All right, guys, everything's nice and tight now, just like you want it, and then now you're ready to plug it back in. All right, so let's plug it back in. C with C. So this thing goes, uh, I think right here. Nice. Nice. Good Chris. Then we got, uh, freak, where's the label for this? Well, I think it's right here. I think, I'm pretty sure it was B. I don't think you can go wrong. And then you have the massive one, which is A. A with A. A. And that's on the other side. And you're set. That's it. Then just get this hose back on. And then the retainer clip. All right, guys, we're done freaking building the fuel pump assembly. This is now equipped with the 525 wall bore fuel pump E85 compatible. Now it's time to tap this into the freaking <laughs> battery. All the specs, bro. <laughs> Intel i9, 32 gigabytes of RAM. <laughs> <laughs> NVIDIA GTX 4. Powered by 12 volt, directs directly to your battery. No Direct problem. Injection. But you have to have a relay. A relay, yeah. So we gotta figure out how to tap this. Now we're at? We're at minute what? Eight minutes. <laughs> Eight minutes and we're halfway there. Halfway, halfway. There. okay, we're there. All right guys, so we're gonna begin tapping in the relay. So my brother Chris, he actually ends up cutting this little end piece right here because this little fat piece is not gonna fit through the grommet inside the car, right? But uh, my brother Subzilla, he just freaking took the actual end piece the off the one. relay. Yeah. Oh shit, that one. So he... You can stick a pin in here. So like, you see these little slots right here, right there, right there? You can stick a pin or a pick tool and then you can just deep pin it basically. And then instead of trying to shove this whole thing in there or cutting it, you can just... So we're just gonna yeah. put that through the rubber grommet. That way you don't have to cut off. Cause I noticed mine has like a little black thing. So they probably already cut it off. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we kind of got ahead of ourselves. You know, we're getting progress done. So basically we tore about <laughs> what? We tore apart the Nissan Z's, you can tell. The tank, we had it dismantled. Hey, let, let, let me show yeah. them what you got going yeah. on. The air suspension definitely did hold not on. make this Hold on, easier. hold on, you yapping too much. Hold on, Damn. write it up. Okay, go ahead, yep. The, the air suspension definitely did not make it easier on us, but regardless, we had to remove this. We had to remove a foam piece. Now, my brother's uh, Zilla Full Boost, he did remove this side panel here, but I swear to God, I, I we didn't know how to remove it. We removed bolts and clips. It was not coming out. Thankfully, we just had to remove this little foam piece in the middle and we got access to the fuel regulator that we need to tap into. So we're just, we just put the fuel pump back inside. We're putting the top hat and we're pretty much just gonna mess with wiring so we could tap it into the battery and this thing should be wrapped up. Join us. All right guys, this is a couple days later. Our positive terminal is through the freaking roof. Look how many collections we got. This thing is insane. We got underglow, strobe light, 
uh, air suspension. We got now a fuel pump attached to it. We got Dior Sauvage. Dior Sauvage. She's freaking we got Jean-Paul crazy. Gaultier. And uh, we just finished tapping in the fuel relay kit. Let me know when to hit it. We tapped it in right there. You guys can see it's that freaking black thing. And luckily there was a nut there so we can easily attach it and it won't move or rattle, which is freaking amazing. So... We already tested it out and it works, but he's gonna do it right now so you can hear it click. Go for it. Oh, oh there's a double click. There you go. The fuel, uh, the fuel pump's working. You can hear the relay click. And uh, we're pretty much set. We just gotta clean up, put this everything back on, and the fuel pump's ready. All right, guys, so I'm editing this video and I kinda just realized that I skipped over all the wiring and what goes where, so you're probably mad confused right now. So I did a diagram to help you kinda do that, okay? So at this point, here is the layout of the car. This is the hood and this is towards the back. The way you're looking at it right now is kinda like this, okay? We're looking at it from this side right here. But pretty much the relay will have four wires coming out of it, right? So you have the red long one. The red long one is pretty self-explanatory. It goes connected from the battery. You'll pass it through the rubber grommet, just hide it under some trim, and that'll be connected straight to the relay, right? That's gonna be your power cable. Then this is where I personally put mine right next to the fuel pressure regulator, but I know Zilla Full Boost put it on the side. Um, but I think it doesn't really matter much. Then the black cable is just ground. So you'll just have to connect this to a screw or nut nearby. So I just put that one there. And then you'll have a blue wire coming out the relay. That will be, you'll have to cut the brown cable from the fuel pressure regulator and tap the brown wire to the blue wire. Now this right here, I put S for silver. If you look on this image, it'll be the brown wire will be coming out from the silver box. Just kind of make it simple for you. And then you will have a yellow wire coming out from the relay and that one you will connect it to a green wire coming from the sensor that you connect to the fuel pump. So when you remove the cover from the fuel pump, you know the sensor that's connected right here that plug you will just have to cut some electrical tape and you will find a green wire there now that green wire is the one that you're supposed to cut and connect or but connect to the yellow wire coming from the relay oh so hopefully that kind of makes sense you don't have to mess with the black box this black box you see right here you won't have to mess with that when we turn on the vehicle the fuel gauge is reading empty so the fuel gauge is not working properly now one potential fix to that is simply driving it to the gas station and filling it up hopefully that fixes the issue if not we're gonna have to take out the fuel pump and see what's the issue behind that all right guys we officially took out the z out of the garage everything is installed but of course everything we do have some issues so we do have a check engine light uh, i did get about six codes i'm gonna post a little picture of the, all the codes i got here on motorsports website it does say people will get a check engine light um, if you install this relay kit the only question I have is if all those codes I'm getting are all normal, like, and are they gonna disappear when I get a tune? The fuel gauge, as you can see, it's reading empty. We're completely empty, but before I started this job, we were halfway full. All right, guys, welcome to a post update. Um, you guys saw we started the vehicle. The fuel gauge was not reading. We got a couple engine codes, so there's an issue. So I'm reopening the fuel pump. Fuel gauge is not reading, so I'm gonna post some pictures here. Either the lever for the floater got caught up on something and it's not floating, right? So it's not reading the level. Or two, the wires that are connected to the fuel gauge are either not wired correctly or, or the clip isn't really pushed in right. So something I'm noticing here right off the bat, here is the fuel gauge lever and that's the little floater right there. And I'm trying to move it. But this thing is like stuck. It's not moving. And I don't think it's supposed to be stuck. It's supposed to move freely, right? Because the water level is supposed to move it. So I'm pretty sure that's our issue. Quick update on the fuel pump. This fuel pump lever, this thing that's supposed to go up and down, was caught behind this little nipple thing right here. It was behind it like this, but on the other side. 
and of course it wasn't going to be able to go up because it was going to hit against this so i don't know how i got caught but luckily it was only that and that was it hopefully it didn't mess up nothing all right guys so i shouldn't i should be able to just put in accessory mode and this should read hopefully it does cross my fingers and let's go it's back to working yeah so it was just a caught fuel lever 